Thank God, by his grace, we have met once again. I welcome you to the program, Soldier of the Cross. We continue our series, which by the grace of God, it has been captioned, getting it together. Oh, how good and how pleasant it is for us to dwell together. Last week, I ended by saying that basically there are four types of relationships and that is what we want to dwell but specifically I will dwell on the romantic relationship as a, as a way of review for the last uh, series I said we have family relationship we have friendship relationship we have romantic and then we have acquaintanceship but I will dwell on the romantic relationship. In the romantic relationship, there are stages and there are levels. So today as I bring to you the stages and, and the levels, I pray that may God grant you more understanding. And on that, on, on, that, on that stage, I would want us to quietly seek the Lord. Seek the Lord in prayer. So let us pray. Our dear God and Father, the creator of mankind, who in the Garden of Eden instituted relationship gave man the idea how to relate to one another. We are talking about this wonderful thing, this legacy you have given unto us. As we have come to remind ourselves and to spice our relationships and to mend our relationships, to have peace, joy, and harmony. May you, O oh Lord, bless about my cherished viewers with understanding into your word. In the name of Jesus Christ, your servant, I commit my soul into your hands, O oh God. Let me speak what you want me to speak. Let me say what you want me to say. Let me teach what you God wants me to teach and as I continue teaching and lecturing and preaching oh Lord may you see through my eyes and see my cherished view as I teach and I lecture oh God may you speak through my voice in the name of Jesus Christ even as I teach I lecture I preach and lift up my hand may you heal through the lifting up of my hand and when we will end the lesson of today, your name will be uplifted and we, your cherished viewers, will be blessed. Thank you, oh God, because you have answered our prayer. For we have prayed in no other name but in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We are talking about romantic relationship and as I've indicated earlier in the romantic relationships there are stages and steps we have what we call the dating stage we have what we call the friendship stage we have what we call the courtship stage and the ultimate is the marriage state I pray that as we go through these stages, God will bless us in the name of Jesus when I talk about dating. Dating simply is a time agreed upon by people to meet and have a chat or interact. Meeting at a restaurant to eat while talking or dialoguing. That is it. Just meeting up. So when somebody says, so oh, I have a date, it's just that he or she has agreed with somebody to meet somewhere, to chat, to interact. A meeting at a restaurant, at a, at an event center, at a, at a garden, somewhere to talk about issues, 
that is small amount in Dayton. Then you can move up to be friends. Then you establish your friendship. And then who is a friend? A friend is someone who you like and know very well. And it is not blood related. He or she is not blood related. That is a friend. That is friendship. In this relationship, there are the do's and the don'ts. In both dating and friendship, sex, sexual intercourse is out of the question. Sexual intercourse is out of these two relationships, dating and friendship. My cherished viewer, my cherished viewers, I would want to take some time and talk about adultery and fornication. Adultery and fornication. These two acts, they defile the body. They are corporates. They make you to be a sinner. They defile you. And anything that defiles will not enter into heaven. When something is defiled, it is corrupted. And its reputation is damaged. I want to take my time and explain what, what adultery and fornication can do to you. I pray in the name of Jesus that you listen to me with rapt attention in the name of Jesus Christ. Adultery or fornication defiles the body. And anything that defiles will not enter into heaven. When something is defiled, it is corrupted. And it damaged your reputation. Again, it destroyed your sanctity. And you who has been defiled, your sanctity is destroyed. Again, you become polluted. When you become polluted, you become unclean. So it, it makes you unclean and impure. You become tainted, blemished, stained, contaminated, flawed, and disgraced in the sight of God. That is too bad. Lord, have mercy on us. My cherished viewers, there is nothing good about getting defiled. There is nothing good about getting defiled. And when you are defiled, it affects your conscience. When you do anything that violates your conscience, your confidence before God is damaged. Then when your confidence before God is damaged, you lack the confidence to stand before God. And when that happens, we will intentionally or unintentionally, we will avoid God. Just like Adam hid himself from God after eating the forbidden fruit in the garden of Eden. We will avoid God because our confidence in the sight of God, has been damaged as a result of fornication and adultery. When we violate our conscience so long, we cannot go to the point where we will not have a fellowship with God. We can't have a fellowship with God. And therefore, we can no longer hear God speaking unto us anymore. That is too bad. 
But unfortunately, fornication and adultery has become the order of the day. You meet a lady today and you want to have sex with her. You meet a man today, you want to have sexual intercourse with her. You are married, you are running after young girls. You are married, you are running after young men. You are married and you are running after people who are married. Married people commit adultery or married people commit fornication. In both cases, they defile you. I pray, I pray that the Bible says in Romans chapter 12 and verse 1, Paul says that I beseech ye therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And then in verse 2, he, he says that do not conform to the pattern of this world. Do not get yourself involved. Don't speak like those who do not believe. Don't dress like those who do not believe. Don't walk like those who do not believe. Don't treat others like those who do not believe. So Paul says that we should not live as the pattern of the world. He, he is urging us, but he says that with a renewed mind. When the word of God is in you, when you abide in Christ and he abides in you, you'll be renewed. So he's saying with a renewing mind, know that which is good and acceptable will of God. It's not what everybody is doing, it's the acceptable will of God. I pray thee, I pray thee that let us avoid fornication and adultery. When you engage yourself in fornication and adultery, it gives evil spirits the legal permission to enter into you while that is unheard of. When you engage yourself in adultery and fornication, it gives evil spirits the legal permission to enter into you. The unclean spirit points to the act of fornication as their ticket of entry. Because it's a sin. It doesn't come from God. It comes from Satan as a result of your lustful desire. Your concupiscence. So when you engage in fornication and adultery, which are acts of Satan, the unclean spirit, they point to that act, the act of adultery and fornication, as their legal ticket to possess you, to dominate you, to, oh my God, to own you. That is too bad. That is too bad. And when this happens, the person you, you become more entangled in the sin of fornication and adultery, making it harder for you to stop doing. Sometimes you want to stop fornication. Sometimes you want to stop adultery. But because it has become part of you, and the evil spirits uh, think that that is their legal ticket of entrance, they come and dominate you. It becomes difficult to stop fornicating and causing adultery. Remember, remember, something, an act, you started as an entertainment. You started as an entertaining thought, has now moved into the realm of the heart, where it becomes a consuming passion, consuming passion, and if you don't do it, you are not satisfied.
If you don't do it, you don't feel good. If you don't do it, you don't feel happy. It has become a consuming passion that is eating you. And therefore, every day and then, you want to do it. When it happens like this, it destroys the relationship with God because your heart is now filled with other things which are not acceptable to God. I am praying that God will grant you more understanding. It is not easy when you teach about these things. You talk about these things because the world will not agree with you. Even some Christians will not agree with you. The men and the women today are telling you that, oh, Mr. Preacher Man, if I don't test the women, how will I get to know that this one is good? Bedmatically, I hope you understand me. They will tell you that, oh, Mr. Preacher Man, if I don't test the woman, how would I know that she has good bedmatic skills? The woman too will say that if, if I don't so test the man, how, how would I know that he can satisfy me sexually? So the thing that you started as an entertaining thought has now moved into the realms of the heart where it has become a consuming passion. So I pray, I pray. I pray, I pray that you will stop fornicating, you will stop adultery, you will stop fornication, you will stop, stop them by the grace of God. Don't say you can't stop because the Bible says that you can do all things to Christ who strengthens you. God will strengthen you. He will give you the ability, the strength, the fortitude, the courage, the wisdom, the understanding to tell yourself, I have stopped in the name of Jesus Christ. Remember, the Bible says that it is only fornication and adultery that when one commits, he or she sins against his or her body, which is the temple of God. And the Bible says that whosoever destroy the temple of God, God will also destroy him or her. That is serious. That is not a good news. It is not a good news. It's so serious. So I would encourage you, and I'm praying that if any one of you, my cherished viewer, is in that situation, he is so addicted to fornication and adultery, I pray that the power of God will be lifted up on you and you'll be delivered. you become a new creation in the name of Jesus. I pray. And I believe you have been delivered. Let me hear. Let me hear. Are the bachelors, are the spinsters, are you around? Are you hearing me? The bachelors and the spinsters, are you around? Let me hear you making some noise. Are you hearing me? I have some secrets for you. Some secrets. They are wonderful. Secret number one. Listen. The bachelors and the spinsters, the men and the women who are not married. Secret number one. Fornication is a sin against God and yourself. It is not an experience. Don't be deceived. Are you hearing me? That is secret number one. Secret number two. You may not enjoy sex for the rest of your life or in your marital life. That is too costly. When we say these people don't understand, God has created us in different shapes and in different attractions. We have the big, the medium, the small, 
the extra big. So some of the men, they are huge, extra huge, medium, small. That is how they are. The women, the same. They are fat, extra fat, medium, and large. And the organs are the same. So if you move from one man to the other, if you move from one woman to the other, that woman, the first woman, the way God has created her, from the head to the toe, everything, if she's fat, everything is fat. If I be tasting fat things, and then you move into medium ones, and you move into small ones, you may know what you like, whether they're big, the medium, extra, large, whatever. Then you go into marriage. You like the extra large. But unfortunately, you get a lady who is medium. You get a, woman, a man who is medium. Although you want extra large. How will you enjoy your marital life? That is costly. And that is why you don't have to move from one woman to the other woman. You don't have to move from one man to the other man. Just get stuck to one. Whether it is extra large, whether it's a large, whether it's medium, whether it's small. That is all you know and you, you will like that. Hallelujah. God bless you. So secret number two is that you may not enjoy sex. For the rest of your marriage, because you have tested, 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 and you know that which is good. But unfortunately, you didn't, you didn't get that in your man or in your woman. Secret number three, are the bachelors and spinsters, are they there? The unmarried, are you there? Secret number three, abortion may kill you or you may not have babies again when you most needed them. You have aborted all the babies in you. You have killed all of them. When you were enjoying, when you were, you were feeling good with life, now you are married, you need babies. The babies are finished in your womb. Your, your man, your husband is chasing you for babies. You have killed all of them. So I'm saying abortion may kill you or you may not have babies again when you most needed them. Stop abortion. And the only way to stop abortion, stop fornication. Simple as that. Are you hearing me? This may cost your marriage. It may cost your marriage. Stop it. In the name of Jesus. Are the spinsters and bachelors. Are you there? I have another secret. Secret number four. It is wonderful. Listen to me carefully. In the name of Jesus. I am saying it emphatically. Sexual intercourse is a gift that must be presented to your husband or wife after marriage. Sex is for marriage. Marriage is for sex. If you are not married, don't get yourself involved. And if you are married, get yourself involved. There are some married people who will deny their husbands of sex. There are some married people who will deny their wives of sex. That is too bad. It is too bad. According to some marriage counselors, sex is the highest form of communication in marriage. So if you are married and you don't have sex with your wife, your husband, that is too bad. Go and do it tonight as, as you listen to me. Tonight after, after the hardest work. Uh, when you go home, begin to massage your wife and massage your husband and tell him, darling, today is today. Ojodi, say Ojodi. We will enjoy to the goodness and kindness of God. But I'm telling you, the bachelors and the spinsters, that Marriage is for sex, and sex 
is for marriage. Sex is a gift that must be presented to your husband or your wife after marriage. So you, the bachelors and the spinsters, you have no business. You have no business. Control your libido. Control your self drives. Kill it. And when you are married, oh, go ahead and blow it. And blow it. And blow it. And blow it. Why can't you say no to fornication? Why can't you say no? Why can't you say no? It is because you always feed the flesh at the expense of the spirit. You feed the flesh and not the spirit. You have not asked God for help. When you read 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 to 16, it tells about the works of the flesh. What the flesh desire. Stop it. When you can't ask God for help, you can't say no to fornication because of what you look at. You can say no to fornication because of the news that you listen to. You can't say no to fornication because you talk about it. You dream about it. You can't say no to fornication because of the type of people you associate with. You can't say no to fornication because of where you go, what you think about, the books that you read, those you consult for counseling. That is why you can't say no to fornication. But I'm praying that God can help you out and exercise the self-control God has given to you. Oh, my bachelors, oh, my spinsters, oh, my teenagers, I am presenting to you the word of God. Hold it firm. And it will bless you. I pray that today the Lord has spoken to you. Also until I come your way another time. With the word of God. Biblically based lectures. Stay blessed and be blessed. Ahua.